Kyle Rieger, and with me today is young Fitzy Poo. Say hello, hey. Fitzy. And if you're not an animal of that, we got two words for you. Earthbound. That, that, it's, it's, it's one word. Earthbound. earthbound I have three words for you. Or two words for you. Matt freaking Hardy. Home video. <laughs> we got two words for you. Home video. <laughs> Which was the best. Fucking, I loved the commercial for the DX videotape where that was the fucking slug line at the end. So good. All right. By the uh, way, um, congratulations of Batman Superman. Uh, uh, what is it? 32% on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, 38 last time I checked. Just got uh, well, still, shit. So, good job, guys. You did it. And... Yeah, we'll put up the distracting GIF while we wait for the email to be sent out. Thank you for those of you joining us a little bit early. But tonight I'm going to be drinking and talking about when I was 10 years old. So it's a lot like therapy, except I don't have to pay for it. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Earthbound is a classic... In every sense of the term, it is my favorite game of all time. And, quite frankly, I don't know if I would still be a gamer, or at least... I don't know if I would be a gamer to the level that I am now if it was not for Earthbound. So, always good to point that out there. And I think Vince is about to have his fifth orgasm over Gary Stridham, which is always a nice wow. thing. Wow. I mean, look at the striations. I mean, look at the striations. Can you, like, can you blame them? Look at that. I can look at them. Vince Ooh, McMahon. look at that mass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. You know what's uh. interesting is Vince actually thought Gary Stridham could be a WWE superstar. And... You would, those are fucking show muscles, like. Things would tear in a heartbeat. Plus, everyone on W, uh, and the WBF was roided up. Oh, well, it's not that. Like, it's just that if you actually listen to Gary Stridham talk and, like, him do, like, interviews from WBF era, which I have. He's South African, right? Yes, yeah. he's South African. He has a very noticeable accent. And, quite frankly, he's not that charismatic. Oh, quite right. frankly, bodybuilding sucks. All right, let's get the game all popped up and uh let's do this shit. Sorry. I have to do a couple of quick things really quick to make sure everything's working right and okay, we're looking good. Uh game is a uh, co-production Published by Nintendo, co-production of Ape, which is a game studio that exists did solely for uh, Shigasasi Itoi, who is the creator and the uh, creative genius behind <coughs> Earthbound uh, to make games. Ape also Bam Margera's uh, mother as well. <laughs> There's a reference for you. Fuck you. I, I mean, I rest love in, you. Rest in peace, Don Vito, who, I, who also touched kids or whatever. I, I love you for making that reference, but still fuck you. And Pal yeah, Laboratories, right. which at this time was headed by uh, the, well, not so recently, but the dearly departed uh, Awada, who basically it's really uh, logically claimed that if uh, Awada did not join the team and help with the development that Earthbound would have never come out. Mm. So he is a very vital part. It also, uh, one of the composers for the game is my favorite uh, Nintendo composer, Hip Tanaka, who also did a lot of different work for uh, the R&D 1 team. So a lot of Game Boy work and weirder NES game work. I believe he did the music for Metroid as well. Uh, Gyromite, which features my 
probably favorite video game song of all time, so this is kind of an all-star development team in terms of, like, in-house Nintendo people, which always makes for nice things. And as we let the demo play just a little bit longer... Huh. Someone actually... Yeah, that was probably me at some point. So, we're gonna start a new game. We're playing in stereo, and... Foster, welcome. Hello, nerds. We Holy are alive. Holy shit, you're alive. And, hey, I am. The email I'm... just went out, so looks like we'll probably be getting our influx in, which is always nice. Uh, so, Fitzy, what flavor of Windows do you prefer? Plain, mint, strawberry, banana, or peanut? I'm a slut for strawberry. You certainly are. And I'm allergic to mint, so please don't do that one. No problem. <laughs> I would usually do peanut or mint, because I like those colors. So... Peanut, actually. I like peanut a lot, actually. But, well, uh, yeah, strawberry. Yeah. We're already in Too late. strawberry. Too late. So, we have to default... We have default names for our characters in Earthbound. Ness is the default name, that's the name everyone knows the main character as. Uh, it's supposed to be the natural continuation the first game the main character was named uh, Nintend, at least in Earthbound Zero. So in this translation he's Ness, because N-E-S. Or you could name him Alec, or Roger, or goddammit Will. Or Brian. I think that could probably fit. God damn it, Will should honestly be what we rename our channel. I don't think anyone would argue with that. Uh, no, I don't think so either. But, uh, as is tradition when I stream and we have to name characters, there is only one appropriate name for our main character in this game. And that, of course, is Ian... Space. Are you r No, you're not naming him Ian Rotten, are you? Of course I- Fitzy, it has been tradition. Whenever we've had named people on the channel, that it, their name is Ian Rotten. Uh, like oh, when god I damn it. <laughs> so, I- I am not breaking tradition now. Alright, we need a girl's name. Uh, her default name is Paula. Hattie. Her, her, her name is Paula. <laughs> I look at, I look at fucking Jerry Lawler and his fucking bitch cunt wife. Her name was Paula. <laughs> nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Your first, it's your first thousand dollar week in the business. It ain't a thousand dollars. Told you he wasn't grateful. So, totally are grateful. we just, are we <laughs> just naming it all after the fucking Rotten family? Yes! Okay. So, are we fucking... Are we naming her Mickey Knuckles, or... Oh, fuck! <laughs> God damn it! so we could name her Mickey, or Moose, or Patty. Uh, Patty, because at least Mickey Knuckles got out. Good point. She got out of the whole situation. Okay. Patty Rotten is still. Yes, Patty Rotten, despite their divorce, is still sometimes with Axel or Ian. Speaking of which, a friend, obviously. It's got to be Axel. Oh. Rip in peace. All right, Ian. All right, Ian. Once got busy in a once got busy in a McDonald's bathroom. Jesus. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, did, did we already acknowledge the... What? Have we already acknowledged what, Matthew? <laughs> Apparently nothing. So, we have one last person to name, and it's got to be an IWA Mid-South Stalwart. So, there's a lot of people. We could name him Pondo. Could name him Bull for Bull Pain. We could... Oh, yo, go for Bull Pain. But Bull Pain hates... 
hates Ian so much. That's why we're doing. Oh no 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 no! It can't. Fuck! God damn it! What is uh? What's the lackey guy's name who had a Star Wars themed wedding? Oh 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 um, a uh, Fannin. Yep. Was it Jim was Fannin. it Fannin? Jim, Jim Fannin. Fannin. Yeah. So, I guess. I guess we're going to have to name him, uh... Actually, Fanon works better, so... I guess we're going to have to name him Fanon. And I feel bad that we named... Okay. Hey, <laughs> right, look, perfect! We got a pet, and I think it's only appropriate... <laughs> we name the pet something incredibly horrible, which would be J. Calvin. Fitzy, do you know who uh, John Calvin is? No, I don't actually. That is Ian's son. Okay, Scott. He has a kid. Yes, he does. Oh. Uh, what is Ian Rotten's favorite food? I think it's obviously... Meth. Oh, God, I was gonna go with light tubes. Sorry about that, guys. Make no, that that's fucking, it. uh, Abdul Kobayashi, actually. Right, right. Okay, uh... Foster, what would Ian Rotten's favorite food be? Fitzy Ian says, Rotten's favorite food? Fitzy says meth, I say light tubes. Well, he's from the Indiana area. Which would be. I'm uh, so mad. Yeah, as somebody from <laughs> from there. Sorry, as bitch. It's been documented. <laughs> Don't be sorry. I okay. Skip. Wait. No. I no. 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 I am not. I. I am not using math. I will be using light tubes because there. There's some. There's a very specific reason why, which we will see in a second. So his favorite food is light tubes. And his favorite thing is math. His favorite thing is, yeah, that makes sense. Because you probably it, say Casa Lupa too. I mean, given his time as an employee of Taco Bell. I, I don't oh, fault shit. him for his time <laughs> spent at Taco Bell. The people who got him fired from there are assholes. That's true. I'm only mocking him on stream where he can't come and find me. Yeah. What's he gonna do if he does? <laughs> Kyle, at this point, I think you could take Ian Rotten. I don't know. He's missing a toe. I mean, what's he gonna do? Sick John Calvin on you? <laughs> you mean the name of our dog? <laughs> Absolutely love the scenery, the mapping, and everything in this game is fantastic. And it's nice because it is a RP. It's one of the earliest examples of a Japanese-style RPG game without an overworld map. Meaning you can walk around pretty much everywhere that you want to. Um, like there's no town system where you basically like enter a town and then you can walk around the town. Then once you leave the town, you're going into an overworld map. Everything is uh, your area to check out. Now, did I actually tell you the first time I actually played this game was on the Virtual Console on the Wii U? No, I'm I'm just <laughs> I'm happy that you played it. Anything you want to talk about? Or... Oh, I got a ton of free points because I got my Wii U just before the Nintendo Club shut down. So I use it for like Earthbound and Super Mario World because I have a next-gen system. I want to play the old games. Perfectly logical reason to own a like to own a Nintendo-based system. Like, it is the, albeit expensive, the best way to experience uh, many of those old classic games. And I, I know it's not the game we're playing right now, but you have no idea how excited I saw, I got when I saw two of the next games to be uploaded for PS2 on PS4. Oh yes, Bully, which will Bully be, and which will be played at some bully. point on here. 
Oh, I know, I know. I I wanted to say, let you talk about the other one. The most depraved video game ever made, Manhunt. E. T. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Diamond's little E.T. I love, I love you, E.T. E. Why? I don't mean to interrupt, but the new Tick got announced, and I'm fucking really happy. It's, uh, do we know who Peter Serafonowicz is? Of course we do, yes. Brian Butterfield! He's, he's the, he is the new Tick. Oh. Oh my goodness. Isn't that Dude. the fucking best thing? The second I saw that there was going to be a new Tick live-action series, I lost my mind. And now fucking one of my favorite actors is going to be in some. I'm really fucking happy about this. Sad he yeah. died in Guardians. Spoilers, but... Oh. Asshole, why'd you reveal that? Oh, well, at least are infamous for their roadblocks. They're going for the world record. Uh, this game has... One of the best early uh, translation efforts uh, by a North American video game company, um, which tried to recapture the spirit of what the game was supposed to essentially imply, which is a Japanese look at Americana, uh, but translate that for American audiences with inside jokes that Americans would get references to. Which we will see a little bit later on in the game. Right now, uh... So, basically, basically what you want to do is imagine Family Guy as a Japanese RPG. That's actually... What the fuck? Or The Simpsons... I would go... No, no, no. It's fucking... It's The Simpsons as a Japanese RPG. Like, because Family Guy... Is a little too self-referential. However, thank you for mentioning cartoons because another famous cartoon has taken influence from Earthbound, South Park. Uh, South Park's Trey Parker actually cites Earthbound as one of the primary influences on the Stick of Truth game, and he's quite a big fan of Earthbound. Which, if any of our viewers have not played Stick of Truth, Get on it! <laughs> I've been meaning to for there's so many games I have to get fucking caught up gone caught up it's on. Really good. Mm -hmm. It's a nice it's a quick twenty hours. If you're trying to do everything which I do in RPGs. There's a reason why I played this game literally I've beaten it at least 40 or 50 times. I've probably played it, like, at least different portions of it a hundred times. Um, and I'm still trying to talk to pretty much everyone. This is Pokey. Pokey is an asshole. <laughs> Pokey is a gigantic asshole. Now, in a world where Ian Rotten is our main character, you have to be the king of assholes to out-asshole him. Mm-hmm. He just... You have to be on... I'm sorry, Kyle. Oh, I'm sorry. He just goes around and bugs the fuck out of the cops right now. And then tells you to leave the meteorite landing because he'll tell you what happened and you're bugging <laughs> the officers. So, yes, Pokey is a hypocrite. And an asshole. Yeah. And a douche. And a dressing. Douche or dressing? Douche or dressing? Wheel, uh, wheel Earthbound. Wheel of, wheel of Obscure Smash Characters. Oh, uh, we got it's Captain Falcon me. here. I mean, let's be honest. Nobody knows what... I mean, Captain Falcon's awesome. I love Captain Falcon, but nobody knows what the fuck he's from. F-Zero. Yeah, I know he's from F-Zero, but no one knows what the fuck he's from. Kyle, Kyle, you're a Nintendo nerd. You are not the person to be actually sticking yeah, up Yeah, like, from a fucking mainstream <laughs> fucking perspective. Nobody there knows are who more the fucking Earthbound people are. Nobody knows who fucking Captain Falcon is. I, no I'd cool say... Um, well, no, I can't say the Fire Emblem characters are more obscure than the Earthbound ones because Fire Emblem's become hugely popular in the United States as of, like, the past, like, six, seven years. Um, Game & Watch. No, because Game & Watch has his own built-in history and had multiple, like... 
Boy had a oh, couple wait. of million seller Game Boy games. Oh, uh, I would probably go with uh, Shulk, I believe, who is the character from Xenoblade. Charlotte is headlining Warp Tour. Where's my hat? Well, your hat and I'm following. And, uh, <laughs> and Pokey is knocking at the door like an oh. asshole. Alright, oh, alright. I gotta head off for a bit, so, uh, Foster, hold down the fart. So uh, I, I will hold down the fart, Fitz. For, you know oh, what? Um, fort fart. Hold down fort fart. I'll fort fart? <laughs> uh, Picky just mocked the way that, uh, Ian Rotten's mother looks. Well, that's not nice. That gets you a beatdown for the IWA Mid South locker room. And Pokey just lost his little brother at the meteorite, and I want to say no to helping him just because he threatens to insult me <laughs> if I say no, and he won't leave until I say yes. Oh, and now we can take John Calvin along with us. I've got the cracked bat from uh, Tracy's room already, so I'm good on that front. So he's trying to get you to help him find his little brother. You're telling him no, and he's the asshole. Yes, because he's <laughs> the one who lost his little brother. And when you see where his little brother is... <laughs> It's it's just awful. All right, let's grab the dog. I love dogs in video games. Oh yeah, the the evolution of dogs in video games is really something to look at too. Mm -hmm. I mean, if only we had a, an outlet to talk about video games for hours to people, Kyle. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware that we can talk about dogs in video games on stream, including the fact that Dog Meat just won Dog of the Year electronically, according to a Dog Awards show, which apparently exists. I, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, and, uh, the dad only being, uh, reachable by phone is actually a clever reference to the concept of, uh, a salaryman in Japan. Meaning a person who literally lives to work. That's all they do. And they're just trying to make enough money for their family so they spend most of their time at work and never go home. And now we get into the trippy ass backgrounds of the battle scenes. Which I love because they're almost all different. And I was reading today that the artist that made these um, basically spent two years total just making weird backgrounds for the game. Damn. Yeah. Foster providing <sighs> back beats. Love it. Oh, let me turn that down. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I'm watching Superstore on Hulu. And oh, Superstore is a fantastic show. It's honestly a little too close to real life for me. <laughs> oh, I know. I could... Oh, and if you... Like I said, Pokey is an asshole. If you notice in any of these battles that Pokey is in with you... He does absolutely nothing. Did Pokey pull that snake out of his pocket by any chance? No. Oh. No, but that does- My pun was right there! I, I know. <laughs> I'm just being a dick. Cause I can. <laughs> Thank God I learned Life Up A, which will be invaluable at this point in the game. 
because, like, this is an old school RPG, and you start off weak as fuck. So I. Well, you start in... off as a small child. <laughs> children are weak, Kyle. I'm. I don't know where children are weak. I, you're acting like I've never fought a child before. <laughs> Never fought a child? Alright, Jack, raise your hand if you fought a child. Oh, you used to me. Oh, I missed this. Oh, god damn it. You stole one of my cookies, that son of a bitch spiked the pro. I know you're gonna give me a cookie back, but that doesn't mean you can steal my cookies. Why is Spiteful Crow not a character in Smash? Because the same reason Ridley is not it just be too difficult. I want a spiteful crow amiibo. We're gonna eat that cookie. We're gonna try and get into one more battle just to get a level up, but we're not gonna go down there. We're just gonna continue up here. And this is why Pokey fucking sucks. His brother was literally right by the fucking meteorite. Asleep. And we're gonna use life up just to get my HP up because I'm gonna be getting in more battles soon. So again, he's the asshole because he's the one with the missing little brother who was sleeping near the meteorite. Yep. That's exactly Kyle, how it works. Kyle, I will support you in pretty much every endeavor you have. You know that. Thank you. You know I got your back no matter what. Yeah. I think you're wrong on this one. <laughs> I'm not, but, you know, to each their own. <laughs> I mean, you're completely and utterly wrong, but, you know, to each their own. You want to fight? Yeah, Foster. Yeah, how about Foster. I how, I, how about I fight old Bullcut McGee over here? The Sandman? You don't mean that. <laughs> I will. <laughs> oh. You're still alive, huh? Yeah, you too. <laughs> yeah, the, the people I pay clearly didn't do their job. Uh... Likewise. <sighs> <laughs> By the way, and... I want to apologize for eating on mic earlier. I was eating my dinner. Oh, it's no problem. I'm eating on mic right now. <laughs> I am yeah. drinking on mic. These what are, you are drinking? In, these are informal streams. It's not like we're doing a podcast or something where it's would be really bad if we were. What what, what are you drinking, Kyle? What what is Kyle's drink of choice this evening? Um, I am drinking a Lithuanian Lithuanian strawberry cider. Oh, nice. Yeah, a lot of Eastern European population. Uh, in the Chicago suburbs, so you can find some pretty interesting stuff. And at some point, I'm gonna break into the alcoholic orange soda. Dude, there's a brewery right here called Saranac. Mm -hmm. They do an, an alcoholic orange cream. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it is a, it is pretty tasty, as the kids say. Do the kids still say that, Will? Well, oh no, I want to ask your nephew. Uh, I'm at my apartment where my nephew isn't at, you shithead. <laughs> I no longer have regular access to him. And this is well, Buzz Buzz from the future. What was that, Kyle? No, I was saying the, car the bug flying around us is Buzz Buzz from the future. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. T-Bones, the fabulous one is here. Why doesn't he tell you how to beat the game? <laughs> if he's from the future, surely. No, he tells you that there's a prophecy that uh, Ian Rotten and his three friends will help save the universe. You know, that's always bullshit. They tell you that there's a prophecy that says you will, but they never tell you how. Ian Rotten... Ian Rodney and his three friends, Mickey Knuckles, uh... No, no, it's it? Patty... Booker? It's Patty Rotten, <laughs> Axel Rotten, and Jim Fannin. Jim Fannin, that, that's what I was thinking of. Oh, also, uh, most unintentionally creepy, 
line in Earthbound is right here. And then, so in, 2006, Dave Prezak. Ian R, buddy, I have something to tell you and only you. Can you come visit me later alone? <laughs> oh, Mr. T-Bones, Will was certainly involved in PCW. He played both Prescott Merriweather and the <laughs> best bad pun that I ever turned into a character, Russell Tyler Orr. Well, a pun is a play on words, Kyle, and none of those words made sense with the pun that you were calling for. <laughs> what? Rust high or? Rustler? <laughs> See? It's, it's... Oh my god! I hated that! <laughs> I feel like I told you that when it happened, too. I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> oh yeah, no! It was because we needed people to fill out Torneo, and it's like, oh, we need original characters. And it's like, fine, give... I'll come up with names and gimmicks for all of them. And the only... And I got a little help from uh, Matt Ryan. He came up with... the He came up with Igmar Johannesson, which became the Crocodile Wrangler. Igmar Johannesson. I think it's actually time to reveal to everybody the one secret identity I've been sitting on this whole time. I'm the <laughs> Funk Man. Oh, man, I was going to say you're the eye dicker. <laughs> no, I'm the eye dicker. We established that. I thought Pinky Sanchez was the eye dicker. You lied. I <laughs> thought Steve the Turtle Wider was the eye dicker. Oh, he I thought Matt Ryan was the eye dicker. I thought the bad boys were the eye dickers. Did you oh. know the bad boys are back? Not also, really um, this is the first <laughs> Starman we will see in the game. The Starman is oh, the uh, trademark. Starman! <laughs> Well, the Starman is the trademark enemy of the Earthbound series. <laughs> and really stretching creative license. Oh, and Starman Jr. basically kicks your ass. If Buzz Buzz isn't there, uh, you can't win this fight because you do three uh, points of damage to him, and Buzz Buzz does 92. Oh, and also, if we're just going to talk about blatant characters that we were in PCW, I was half of the roster. With, like, one voice. Hey, I had several <laughs> voices. They were just... I had several voices. One just happened to be, like, a third of my characters. Yeah, Billy Crack and fucking Bitter Bruce. And Hoax. And Hoax. They're all just same levels. Because Hoax Hogan's like this brother. He's gotta get a little bit thrilled. But then... Billy Crack gets a little nasally. Getting down now in our kitchen. Killer McMahon. Jeffy, uh, Jeff, Matthew, Matt, and Sparky Mid Nitpick are all the same voice. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Which one's Matthew? Jeffy, Matt? Jeff, Matthew, Matt, and Sparky Mid Nitpick. It was just Jeff. It was baby brother Jeffy. Yeah, my baby brother Jeffy. <laughs> Which got <laughs> this is the most horrible thing I will ever have to say in my life. That fucking fake suicide attempt bullshit that Matt Hardy pulled. Ruined a great character. Because uh, there were a lot of plans for Matthew Matt Hardy that were going to be very, very funny, and they all got sidetracked. And there was also one plan that was kind of stupid. Which plan? Doctor Who Cares. No, Doctor Who Cares was fucking brilliant. <laughs> because... well, I, mean, I agree. He would have been the biggest baby face on the roster. <laughs> yeah, Doctor Who Cares was brilliant because of all their... Thank you, Will, for posting that so I don't have to. Oh, oh shit, uh, I are you... tomorrow? Sorry. Are you guys ready to no. have uh, parents abusing their children? It's not I don't think thing. anybody's ready for that, Kyle. <laughs> Yeah, he goes upstairs, he sends his children upstairs, and beats them 
with appropriate sound effect, and then tells you that your family should leave <laughs> from next door because they loaned your father, who's never there, money, and uh, he and his family live in poverty. This is Fifty Shades of Abusive Parenting. Holy shit! <laughs> Oh yeah, and the mom mm-hmm. says uh, the father who just abused his children is lenient with him. But Doctor Who Cares was going to be f- was fantastic because we never got to unfortunately we never got to do the regeneration where it was going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin. And that was going to be the first regeneration. If PCW had continued, Doctor Who Cares was going to just keep regenerating into different wrestlers. I think Jesse Ventura was one of them, because we never got to do the Jesse Ventura voice. I it's prob- a conspiracy. I probably would have suggested Art Donovan. Because <laughs> that would have been fantastic. <laughs> yes, it would have. Because oh, then we could have had Randy as the companion. God damn it, it's so <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Art Donovan should go in the celebrity wing of the Hall of Fame. Oh, we might be hearing from Art and Randy at some point in the future. <laughs> yeah, Cosmo Baba, yes, if he became Steve Austin, he would become Doctor. What? <laughs> oh god damn it I did not mean to hit uh, Buzz Buzz is going to tell us the story one more time because I hit tell me the story one more time by accident so we just have to wait through it for him to go through text I will and he gave me the soundstone again even though I already... I still use that... I still use that Twitter sometimes. <laughs> oh, the Funkman was a great character. I keep teasing that he's going to announce his presidential endorsement. I'm waiting... I'm waiting for Trump to drop out of the race before he does it, though. Trump's yeah. never dropping out of the race, dude. Even if he doesn't get the Republican nomination, he'll run as an independent. Oh, no, no, no. He... Funkman's endorsing McKinley. I just think it'd be funnier. <laughs> but should we just keep this... going inside baseball with PCW while we play this? Did James Laurinaitis get signed by a team yet? I don't know. I don't know. I just want to know why like the, the husband looks like the planter's man. <laughs> he the does look the... like the planter's peanut man. And oh, like, fuck the... yes! <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Will! It's the photographer! <laughs> okay. No, this guy, I've said... is, this guy is one of the best parts of Earthbound. He pops up periodically and takes your picture for an instant memory. Look at the camera, ready? Say, Fuzzy Pickles! And he takes your photograph. Look at these photographs! And then... His entire purpose is he periodically checks on really your strikes me as a, is what could possibly be a very odd translation. Uh, no, Fuzzy Pickles, that was uh, thrown in by the English translator just as a bit of fun. A lot. What, Will? Well, what would you say, you, Will? You should, Will. I'm gonna go, since I'm gonna go rest in the house soon anyway, I might as well just fight a couple guys and build up my experience another level. Smash attack, Coil Snake became tame, and soon enough these enemies will not want to fight me. And sneak attack on the spiteful crow. I should probably explain the attack system. Hey, did we ever have a... Did we ever have an ending to the recurring Jerry Lawler joke? What recurring Jerry Lawler joke? That, like, every answer in the dungeon you throw out is just Lance Russell calling a Jerry Lawler match in the middle school. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That... 
And then Lawler had to go and die on television. <laughs> Dude, we did the fucking doing a Lance Russell four days because four days after that, because that was Trio's weekend. That's right. Well, that's, I think, around the time that the picture of Lawler eating the cheeseburger came out, too. Yeah. Because <laughs> we felt bad. Gary Lawler takes a bite out of the cheeseburger. Oh, my. <laughs> Yuri Lawler is gnawing away at that Burger King cheeseburger, not realizing he could have picked so many other better quality burger products. I mean, if the, if the man's gonna cheat death like that, cheat death with quality. Mm hmm. I'm sure there's a Five Guys somewhere in Memphis. Okay, you realize you're He's saying that about well. the man who has had. A well-documented habit of just eating eating Twinkies and drinking Coke all his life. Yeah, but our point is he should be eating quality burgers. I'm s oh fucking goddamn you spiteful crow! You steal my bread. I still find it very very hard to believe that he's avoided drugs and alcohol all his life. I know. I mean. Like, as a, as a guy on top in the 80s in wrestling, it's I still... I thought you were going to say, as a guy who is currently drunk. Uh... <laughs> 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 as a man who is currently, quote-unquote, tripping balls, I find it very <laughs> difficult for anybody to abstain from drugs. <laughs> I and I just died. I don't I'm know sorry, why. I hear that. Why send flowers? <laughs> ah, fucking! I hate these spiteful. The spiteful crow keeps stealing my cookies. He's such a spiteful asshole. And he keeps dodging my attacks. He stole three cookies in a row. What the fuck? I think your accent just came out a little, Kyle. <laughs> Oh, my Midwest accent? Yes, that was awesome. What the fuck? Fucking stealing three of my cookies! Jesus Christ, it is coming. Debra! Debra! I love the cookies, Debra! Alright, I should probably call my dad and say at the game. What a weird angle. Oh, you like Debra's cookies, huh? You some bitch. <laughs> He's standing up for Debra's honor! I had her cookies! Woohoo! I had her cookies once, and my cookies are made moves! Woohoo! Mickey Mouse? <laughs> hey, you know, you know who's <laughs> un, you know who's an underrated asshole and somebody that I feel like I'm going to hate the more I watch him? Me, Gene Okerlund. Okerlund is so great at being an asshole, though. Yeah, but it gets on my nerves. Dude, it's just like, Okerlund fucking gets himself over more than wrestlers when yeah, he realizes... it's fucking annoying. Like, when he, he's sitting there with the Dungeon of the Doom with fucking the Giant as the World Heavyweight Champion. And he's like, he's like, well, fans, I've got to wrap this up. Jimmy Hart's breath is really smelling bad. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? The guy, he's changing the chant. What are you doing? It was WCW. It didn't matter. I know that, but... Oakland did not give a fuck in WCW just like Heenan. Okay, so I've got an ATM card, a cracked bat, a soundstone, and one cookie, because the crow stole all of my fucking cookies. Spiteful Crow is my favorite video... Spiteful Crow is now my favorite video game villain ever. <laughs> Wait until if we get to, because this is just part one of what will be a long-winded series. I don't know, man. It sounds like you're building up a straw man fence. Straw man, straw man. No fire, please. Uh, fire. uh, Foster, wait until we get to Master Barf. Master, Master Barf. Rambling over. The scarecrow throws a fireball. <laughs> not even really a land wrestling friend anymore. He's just a up and down, boys. 
The Play world Pokemon. is gonna be such a worse place when Mance Russell passes. That'd be so right. sad. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> And that's gonna be that's gonna be huge Facebook posts. You know how they say death comes in three? That's like worth three wrestler deaths. <laughs> no, it'll be like him, Dave Brown, and Corey Macklin. Corey Macklin's already dead. Yeah, Corey Macklin's already dead. Corey Macklin's so. dead? Yes. Yeah. Jesus. Corey Macklin got into a car crash and died. <laughs> Why are we laughing at that? Uh, I don't know. I'm laughing at the fact that I didn't realize Corey Macklin was yeah, dead. It's his, it's his really <laughs> lame Will Chamberlain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Mr. Red was a zebra. Fuck you, Fitz. <laughs> you believed that for years. And yes, I know. Black people can get sunburned. <laughs> <laughs> That is my favorite unheralded one, because I think in a... <laughs> and honestly, this I is know, slowly right? become inside baseball the stream, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, da -da 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 inside baseball, da 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 da. This is totally a baseball song. <laughs> <laughs> what? That, what a, uh, everyone's a a stupid. John, John da -da 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 -da. If we're, if we're, here we go, we're just watching the baseball. <laughs> Alright, I should probably use the Baseball, gimme, gimme, gimme. Baseball, 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 baby, baby, baseball. Okay, okay, Kyle, what were you going to okay, say? You were, you were drifting into the 90210 theme there, Fitz. <laughs> oh, I know the 90210. I don't even know who it is. <laughs> yeah, who, who do you yeah, think he is? Dave Meltzer? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, yeah. Yeah. So is this kind of like Pokemon? Because it looks like Pokemon. No, it's, uh, it's an uh, RPG, so it's kind of. Oh, I got the green squirrel. Like, I got uh, it's a green So it's a Pokemon ripoff, then, if it's an RPG. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can't help it if you what? like the most popular RPG of all time, Japanese RPG, I should say, even if it's not really that good of an RPG. What? No, in terms of being a Japanese-style RPG, Pokemon's really not that good. Yeah, Pokemon's not that great, Fitz. I don't know where you've been. I am going... <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm going to shank you in whatever form of dick you have. I miss this. <laughs> right in your fucking dick. How's the game going? Oh, it's going good. I'm going into that creepy old man's cabin where he's got something secret to show me. In Uncle his Tucky's basement. Uncle Tucky's puzzle basement? Uh, yeah, you just come in. Yeah. Look at my... Uh, Whoa. You wanna know how I made that spring pop out on my bed? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you wanna see my golden idol? Come on, just just take a peek at peek at my I'll golden in treasure. It. Yeah, I'll I'll dig in your hole, kid. Yeah, come you over here. You won't wear a shirt and you'll cry. <laughs> you wanna start that over? Yeah, I'll start it over. Hello, Uncle Paul. And that is the first appearance in the game. How you doing, Matty? Uh, that was the first appearance in the game of the Mahi Mahi statue, which is essentially one of the ah. evil MacGuffins of the game. The dolphin fish, as it's also known. Hmm. Mahi Mahi, my favorite inside joke from TNA ever. What is that from, uh... Uh, when they were filming the Royal Rumble West Side Story ad, uh -huh. Dog, like a bunch of TNA guys invaded, and Road Dog just went. Oh God! I remember that. They wouldn't take uh. our cookies, but we ate their mahi mahi. <laughs> Aren't we clever? Still not as good as fake Vince McMahon and fake Triple H wandering around to try and stop the Kurt Angle promotional video from being shown. Because Was fake Triple H P.D. Williams? I don't remember. Uh, it makes sense because he kind of would pull it off, I think. Alright, we're just gonna rest at the house really quick, uh, so that I can get my life and 
psychic points back up. And then we'll be able to visit the first town, Onet. We'll actually be able to see some more of the aspects of the game that are truly, like, innovative and even some that developers to this day haven't really picked up on, on being good Oh, for ideas. fuck's sake. I'm sorry, but Luke Harper is hurt now. Oh, yeah, no, he got hurt last yep, night. Yep, uh, totally still. Also, what episode of Sunday are you watching? Um, the new season. I have a fire stick on the stream TV coming now. Sweet, yeah, new season. The first half's eh, but, like, after the fucking, uh, Suburbs episode, it gets really good, so. I, I've been told that the ski episode is ridiculous. I, that's my least favorite from the season. So. Well, I mean, you're basically dead. Fight so pro! No, I'm fucking Charlie, let's be frank. <laughs> No, I'm friends. In appearance. In, in appearance. <laughs> hey, gal a snail. Oh, that's a good idea. Wait, I thought... Didn't we establish years ago that I was Charlie? No, I'm... Nah, I'm Charlie. Like, no, it, no, it no, doesn't... No, no, it doesn't no. help. Hang on. Anything. It's the people in that restaurant with Johnny that were Charlie. Will, Will. shut up, your D. <laughs> Oh my god, Will, how- I just fucking got that. <laughs> oh, man, that's a classic. That yeah, is a classic. That is a fantastic callback to something that no one will get, which is- And uh, no one's gonna- we're not telling that. Oh, wait. Yeah, that one really we can't can. tell. We can't tell that story. This one is, uh, I can, I can tell you guys- boy. Hey, guys, World Shittiest Library, yeah. all you can do is borrow maps. Dude, I, I think you're underestimating maps. <laughs> maps are awesome. Well, you can't borrow books, awesome. but you can borrow maps. Except for the one time later in the game when you can borrow books. Well, maybe that's all that Ness wants to do is borrow a map. It's not like they told him he can't borrow anything else. It's just yes, that yes, they it, did. She literally said, "Well, kids can only borrow maps at this library." Why? That's really weird. I mean, it would make more sense if it was like, oh, you can only borrow a book, but you can't watch any of the movies or something like that. And that'd even be weird. But, like, it'd be a lot less weird than that. <laughs> Alright, gotta, gotta remember how to get into the hideout here. So... This seems like a recurring theme of, 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 of uh, SNES Adventure games. Is that, uh, you try to go through, like, things in the trees that look like normal entrances, but they're not. <laughs> This happened to you a lot, Will. Alright, I got my Mr. Baseball cap, so we're gonna equip it really quick. <laughs> what? <laughs> he got a cap from Bob Euchre. Yeah, I got my Mr. Baseball cap. Oh, I thought he cap. got a cap from, uh, Donnie Baseball. Or as, they, or as the kids call him, Mr. Baseball. Donnie Baseball? You'd be the new manager of the Miami Marlins, Don Mattingly? And well, let's dig go. around in the garbage can and get a hamburger. No, actually, since I'm the only real, uh, I think I'm the only actual fan of the team in the world. I yeah, and, and, you know, and, you, and you know the deal, right? Better shave that facial hair, bud. That's that's an edict for everyone, not just the team. Mettingly, I told you to get rid of the sideburns. Still yeah, like he a more opened, than yeah, up to like a million of those jokes. <laughs> what was that, Kyle? Still like him more than Steinbrenner. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to take Still out- Still like him more than Jeffrey Loria. <laughs> I'm gonna take out all no. of my money so I can buy expensive things at this drugstore, like a baseball like bat. Dude, Hitler Wait. is more likable than Jeffrey Loria. Hey, 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 let's not say things no, like that no, 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 here. No, no, no. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. He's yep. more likable than Hitler, but less likable than Jay Sherman. Also known as okay. By the way, Fitz, I love that your picture is armed Rusev. Yeah, fucking. Rusev, Break uh, yourself. Shoot. Break yourself, fool. All right, um... 
we're gonna go down to the arcade and fight some nasty sharks. Sharks are gonna. <laughs> what? No, that's. That is. No, the... I... I lifted my head up and saw Frank's flag. <laughs> Oh man. All right. Why are you fighting the green bastard? <laughs> and I got a hamburger. Well, yeah, you got a cheeseburger for the dirty burger. Now I'm fighting Sidewalk Surfer! How, how did you know about the pilot I filmed in the 90s? You filmed a live action pilot of Doug? Yes. Um, I was Skeeter. You're not black! Oh, Horribly miscast, but the director was a racist. <laughs> so I had to say to Mr. Gibson. <laughs> oh, oh my God! What a horrible sequel, The Yes Man Junior. <laughs> I really have a desire to see the Yes Man Senior. I mean, it was terrible, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> was that the one where Jim Carrey had to say yes to everything? Yes. Liar, liar on a much worse scale. Okay, so that's the one where Jim Carrey was like, Yes, violence in movies is bad, even though I just started this violent movie called <laughs> Kick-Ass 2. Jim I don't take anything Jim Carrey says seriously when he's filming a movie. Or really, just at all. <laughs> I don't take anything Unless... Jim Carrey says seriously because he said that fucking vaccines cause autism. And he yeah. had his penis Yeah, but that was just a hype of movie. <laughs> You're just trying to sell a movie. It's show business, Kyle. I don't take any Jim Carrey movie seriously or if he's not talking out of his ass. <laughs> All right, I've got enough money to I, go. But I get where you're going with it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough money to go buy a cheap bracelet from the drugstore, so I'm going to go do that right now. Okay, I do want to understand something in in in, uh, in RPGs. Mm -hmm. um, this seems to happen a lot. Yeah. Uh, and it happens in, in other video games too. Why does eating food cure you? <laughs> of, of, like, why does it help you out? Um, like, you've been hit by something. It's not like in real life that you got hit by like a thunderbolt and you put a cheeseburger on top of the burn. It's because they need a MacGuffin to, uh, to give you help. Like, okay, I don't think a McMuffin's gonna help either, Kyle. <laughs> what, about Mc, what about a McGriddle? In some RPGs, it's a potion, Will. In some, you just have magic spells. Like, Ness has magic, uh, life of magic spell. Well, I'm sorry, Ian Rotten has a life of magic spell in this game. But, like, you know, you just need one thing that can actually work uh, to help you out and cure what ails you, for lack of a better term. It's just a necessity. Like, in most fantasy-based RPGs, it's typically potions or, like, a cure-all of some sort. Oh, man. Or you, or you have a healer in your party. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's just, it's an know, easy it's, way to have... It's a, uh, it's a nonsense question. It's just more pointing out kind of the ludicrousness of just, like, eating a cheeseburger in the middle of a paddle and being, oh, man, I'm ready to go. Well, Will, I am glad that you actually brought that up because the <coughs> major point of Earthbound is to take traditional RPG conventions and kind of put them on their head. Um, that was Etoy's goal with the game. Like, it's meant to be a bit silly and non-conventional. That's why it's not a fantasy-based setting. It's a 
essentially real world small town type setting. Even though it's an epic quest in order to save the universe, you're still in a small town just eating cheeseburgers and wandering around. Alright, let's go inside the arcade and fight those greasy sharks. <laughs> So are the sharks just kind of your standard gang in this game? Uh, yeah, they're a generic punk gang, and I need to, uh, defeat them all. Oh, these guys. Yeah, I need to defeat them all and their boss, Frank, in order to, uh, uh in order to get access to the first Your Sanctuary place, which is called Giant Step. So I, I think this was brought up before, and when you said Frank, it just went into all his Frank Reynolds quotes. Goodbye, country Mac. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hello, Not punk. Yet. No. I had something for this. This guy is such a rockin' dude that he gave me a hint on to equip weapons in this RPG. Thanks, Skate Punk. Oh man, you ready to get on Spanky? <laughs> okay. Well, I also think that um that you were right. Um, all the way. Um, the dialogue also follows this uh this this coda that they have. Where the dialogue is unlike anything I've ever seen in a game before. In that it's probably dumber than the dialogue I've seen in normal games. It's child... It's... Yeah, it's to evoke an essentially childhood and childlike... Yeah, but no child talks like that. You know that. <laughs> I do. How do you, don't you? I didn't, like... I'm not saying I said spankity, but, like... It's spankity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as somebody who grew up in Stankonia, I really think I should like you. Oh, God. <laughs> the Yes Man Jr. became tame. And I should have just one more hit to take out the skate punk. I want to get uh, one more level up before I take on Frank. I figure if I get to... Or if I get close, a level up or close to a level up, I'll gain a level against him, and that should be now, perfect. Is Frank carrying around a Magnum condom for his monster dog? Oh, no, but he does have a Magnum dog. God All damn right, it, Frank. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck it. Uh, we're just going to use a life up spell. With my health maxed out and take on this last shark. And you know what's fucking badass gangsta style? Using a hula hoop. That is, that is totally badass right there. Someone start playing Natural Born Killers, please. Terror Emmett gates my error. Now I can't hang around my mama cause I'll scare her. Oh, and Frank has long hair and a faux hawk and he looks like Michael Hayes. He totally looks like Michael Hayes and dresses like Michael Hayes. I never realized that until right now, but that is awesome. If Michael Hayes stabbed people, he would totally be Frank. <laughs> if Michael Hayes stabbed people and wasn't a racist. Well, the things you don't want to be yet, it's that you know home sweet home, it's a home sweet misery. It kind of looks like Rocksteady. Oh, that'd be Bebop. Which one was the one with the blonde mohawk? Um, that was Rocksteady, because Bebop... Rocksteady was the one. Yeah, the piggy pig. Which like, one oh, Rocksteady? Rocksteady was the... No, Rocksteady was the rhino. I thought you were talking about the white 
the rock study before he got transferred. Well, before he left, he looked like Pimp Gangrel. Oh, he totally looked like fucking Pimp Gangrel. Daddy Gangrel. This Strangle. Is... This yeah, is... which one is... Now you have to fight him again? Oh, no, you have to fight his monster. Which one is Seamus? Uh, Rocksteady. Rocksteady, okay. yeah. Because Bebop Seamus, is black. fan of the acclaimed Irish sitcom, Father Ted. Oh, oh he's hi there, fella. Hey, do you want to see me dress up like a Chinaman fella? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Was it ICW show the Father Ted cast invaded? Okay, what? that would be very difficult to do. <laughs> <laughs> because... yeah, I realize Ireland and Scotland are nowhere near each other. You're absolutely well, right. Well, also, there, there are certain important members of the cast that have been dead long, 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 I think long uh, before ICW was a thing. <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's like a new version of, of Father Ted they're doing. Um, that'd probably be fun. Alright, I just defeated Frank and... Ready I'm just starting to sit down and watch all the episodes. I've seen the clips. Especially of Father Jack. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna go up to my house to do a life... To do a life and point... Uh, you go in your house to do a line. Yes, to recover. <laughs> a line of meth to recover. And I should probably mention the ways of attacking enemies. If you approach an enemy when their back is turned to you, you get a green swirling background. That means you get a uh, first shot on them, so you get a free hit on them. And if an enemy, if you are more powerful than an enemy, they'll run away from you, and if you approach them, you can just kill them instantly, you don't even have to battle. Which is nice, and something that a lot more RPGs should have implemented. And, uh, uh my mom cooked me some light tubes and told me to rest. That's Late the lock, once again! This is no small potatoes! Add some hot sauce. Gonna eat some light tubes in the mouth. Homeless Jimmy is a pussy, according to me, Ian Rotten. Yeah, oh, pay the price. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, in Ian Rotten's, I believe, Tournament of Death 4 promo. He talks about how homeless he got the spot because homeless Jimmy is out because he's hurt, and then he proceeds to call homeless Jimmy a pussy. What kind of injury did homeless Jimmy have? I don't know. I think he might have retired from wrestling at this point. <laughs> what a pussy getting out of a business that was destroying his body. Oh, before before Fuck that guy. Before we all forget it, or before me and Foster forget it, I looked it up. It was over the top wrestling, which is the which is like the sideshow, like wrestling promotion in Ireland. They did a show called Ox Head, <laughs> which is um how um how what it is how Father Dougal um, addresses Ted on the show. That was the name of the show. Although the one they did, although the one that I think ICW did where they got Chris Kamara to do the intro was really funny too. <laughs> I gotta sign up for ICW on demand. I keep forgetting to. What's up? Sure. I had ordered like 40,000 bucks up. Time for an alcoholic orange soda. I gotta get that cream soda. Oh, Progress Rust had Chris come up. What's that? No, no, there's, there's no uh, progress here, Will. Hard I'm the soda. talk of the town. Mayor Purple Maybe is the... waiting for me. Here's Purple. another map. <laughs> Mayor Purple and his Hitler mustache are waiting for me. Mustache is waiting for you too. Mustache has got a life of its own. <laughs> I made I made the sharks wet their pants. 
<laughs> According to the mayor. What the fuck? The sheriffs have got nothing on the tunnel snakes, guys. No. Or the Hell Satans. <laughs> well, the Hell Satans is the greatest gang of all time. Wait, which Hell Satans? Homer's Hell Satans or John Goodman's Hell Satans? Homer's Hell Satans. Wrong. It's John Goodman's Hell Satans because one of their members drank from the toilet like it was a coffee cup. Was that Community? No. That was the episode of The Simpsons with the Hell Satans. Ah. Because Goodman's Hell Satans... Ooh, Psychic Butterfly! Psychic Butterflies, uh, Magic Butterflies, I should say. I believe they're called Psychic Butterflies in the Japanese version of the game. Um, make you relax, meaning they restore, restore your psychic points. They give you around 20 each time, so they're always worth a lookout for. And... You think Homeless Jimmy was actually never booked by IWA Mid-South? They just said they booked him? Uh, no, it was CCW, and he had been booked by CCW before, so... The Traveling Entertainer Shack is now open, and it's got a fuck- WHY DO ALL THE FANS HAVE SPRINGS POPPING OUT OF THEM?! I'll have to move to another room in a minute, guys. Sorry. Okay. Got some attack slugs going after me. They apparently no hypnosis. If only you could get defense slugs, then there would be no fight. Well, they would, there would still be a fight. I'd have to kill them. They just wouldn't attack me. What's up? Yeah. I'll be back. And I think uh, once we complete Onet, that will be a good place to stop for the night. So uh, we're in the first year sanctuary location right now, which is uh, the giant step. Where we'll fight our first, uh, your safe You're fighting an bots. adenoid! You're fighting something you don't really need! <laughs> God damn it, monster. I missed you so much. <sighs> Yay, I won! In slot holes now seven, offense went up by one, vitality by one, IQ by one, luck by one. Hit points by 12, psychic points by 3. Ian got a skip sandwich, which is kind of <laughs> yes, a skip sandwich. A skip That's how you're on it. A skip sandwich basically it cures like 6 points of health but lets you run faster for 20 seconds. And that's it. Like, it's... A, skip happens. It's a useful item if you want to avoid fighting enemies, but that's about it. And honestly, since, like, if you're... The more you fight enemies... Like, most of the battles in this game are fairly simplistic, thankfully. Like, there's not much complex strategy until later battles. So... Yeah, there's no point. Do you save them up to avoid battles later on, or well, is it, I, just, is it just like these battles in the wild? Uh, like basically, the best way I could put it is if I wanted to like get through this dungeon as quickly as possible, I could use that skip sandwich and sprint around, and avoid fighting 
these guys, but at this point, I want to uh, gain as much health, gain as much many levels as possible before I fight uh, the boss of giant step. So I'm gonna eat a couple of these cookies just to uh, free up some inventory space. I would say that's one of the bigger flaws of Earthbound is your inventory space is very limited. And that's kind of an archaic thing at this point, like, uh, in terms of Japanese RPGs. Like, in most Japanese RPGs, uh, items will stack. So, like... Is the I idea behind that to encourage fighting opponents so that you lose health and have to eat things? I, it's just, it's just a trope. Like, I shouldn't say a trope. It's just, it's there are some, there's fl some flawed design. A convention is, I think, maybe the better term to use. Yeah. Of of, of older RPGs. Yes, uh, old RPG convention, which had been ab not abandoned by this point, but which had not been used nearly as much by this point, and yeah. I gotta run away. Ants. Oh fuck, I'm dead. No, I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna use life up A. Mortal damage. Thankfully, I foresaw something bad like this happening, and I safe stated a little bit ago. Because. Like, I, this isn't me trying to play the game hardcore in depth like I would as a kid. This is me playing the game for entertainment purposes. And, God bless you. Yeah. Like, I don't think anyone, like, anyone's gonna think, people could think I was cheating them, but honestly, I really don't care. Like, <laughs> I don't want to die in this portion of the map where there's potential that I could die. Like right there against that rounding mouse, if I had missed that attack, I'd be dead. There's nothing I could do about it. Because at this point in the game, when you're a single player alone, um, there are easy ways to die because you have no one to back you up and enemies can only attack you. So, I want to build my levels up and I don't want to go back to like my last save point and lose half my money at this point. And it's not going to hinder me, but then I'd have to come back to the cave and fight my way through all the enemies again. It's just not worth it. Climb up. Over here, and this is the easiest dungeon in the game because it's the first one, obviously. And as the game goes on, the dungeons get more complex. There are mazes, um, there are logic puzzles in them, so there's a wide variety of just interesting stuff that the game does that aren't your typical RPG conventions, I should say. jump back into Japanese RPGs, because I know you tried to play Chrono Trigger at one point. Um, not really. Um, I have, I have a couple, I have, well, I don't have a couple right now. I really don't have, I haven't gotten started with Super Mario RPG, because I'm in, um, I, fin I just finished Super Mario World, and I finished F-Zero. Um, a couple, a couple Wait, of you actually beat F-Zero? Well, um, I got through, uh, King not, not like, 
I've beaten like a couple different levels of this. Not like I haven't beaten on anything on expert yet. Okay. No, no, no. That's, that's really true. rough. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what you mean. <laughs> I was, I was like, you're actually surprised. I just, but I beat the other two on all the tracks. Yeah, no, it's uh, F Zero, especially. Well, actually, should... expert level is incredibly difficult. Yeah. And I feel, I like, I'm actually not that bad at F Zero because it's a, a very enjoyable game. Oh, F Zero is very fun. It's one of those games that I never really played as a kid, and I picked up later on. And I enjoyed it, but I never got into it to the level that I, like the best way I can put it, I never got into it at the level that I probably should have. So it's something that I'll end up going back and playing. Like, that's one of the reasons why I like doing this kind of stuff is because I'll experience games that I've dipped my toes into, like for uh, later on down the line, we're going to be doing a uh, rare game stream, which like, not rare the company, but rare hard to find games. And uh, the games that I've been practicing for that are phenomenal. Like, uh, um, yeah. But I have a Super Mario RPG on here, just as something maybe I'll play a little bit later. I think I've gotten into parts of, like I've kind of dabbled into other games, and for various reasons, have kind of stalled on them a bit. Um, I think kind of, I'm kind of. I kind of, I don't think I've got the skill right now to, to play Super Metroid all that well, so I'm stalled on like one of like the second or third boss. And it's just like there's been so many other games I play that haven't come back to it to like kind of like try it a, a lot more and get it down. Um, I'm really liking Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. I know it's not your favorite series, but it's something. It's just a very very good game. Oh no! Like I mean, um, Link to the Past is probably the perfect introductory. Uh, Zelda game, and like if I had to pick a favorite in the series, like of the earlier Zeldas, like the 2D Zeldas, or as I will say guys, this, it would be the one. Well, one thing I will say about um about about old any SNES games, Legend of Zelda is amazing at like giving you all the tools you need to know where you're going, but it took me. Almost embarrassingly long to figure out the boomerang stuns people so I can hit up with my sword. I was like dying like immediately. I was like, what the fuck? How do you even beat people? <laughs> I just hit him with my sword and I'm like, why can't I hit you? This is annoying. <laughs> and then I just threw the boomerang and I was like, oh, I can hit people and I won't like, cl I won't clash swords because they're stunned. Oh, it makes sense now. And then I was progressing pretty rapidly. Yeah. Like the thing. This is this. <laughs> The problem that I problem that I have with especially earlier Zelda games is just the simple fact that there are times where I will get like confused and lost. Like and people will say, Oh, it's easy, go here and it's like, Well how do you know that? And their logic is, Oh, I played it a lot as a kid or I read a guide or something like that and it's like to me that's not good. That's bad game design mechanics. And it could just be me. Like, I'm not saying that thus Zelda's a bad game because of that. No, it's just that's... I did... I will say this, when I beat Super Mario World, I did have to read a guide to figure out what the fuck I was doing in, like, the Forest of Illusions, whatever it's called. Oh, Forest of Illusion is a bitch. PSI like, Death A kills all the attack slugs. The power of I just, honestly, I just honestly want to play through games. I don't really care, like, you know, that much on, on, on how I do it. Um, to, to a certain extent, not like any, like, gameplay cheats. Um, I told you that I was using, like, save states, like, midway through levels, and you're like, ah, I don't want to do that. And I was like, well, I kind of do, because I just want to get through so Yeah, no, play and I play. completely understand, because with you, it's, like, you are learning, like, so much, like, so much mechanically in games that, like, it's been ingrained in me for fucking, not just years, but my entire life. Like, it's just, one of those weird things where I get what people say about old SNES games. Like, well, they don't, they don't hold your hand. Or SNES is not a great example. NES is probably the premier example of this. They don't hold your hand or stuff. And I'm like, well, I mean, this is just showing how far we've come in video game programming. Like, it's, it's not always saying it's really holding your hand, but it's it's giving you all the tools you need to understand what you need to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um. 
but I can understand why people admire these old games and like to play them more. Oh yeah, no, like, and it's completely, it's partial nostalgia, but there are a very large amount of older games that are really good and still hold up, like, Earthbound is the, I'd say probably the prime, the prime example of a 16-bit style RPG that holds up, because there's a lot of them that don't. There's complex but you brought, up a, you brought up a good point, where it's like, oh, I don't want to have to read a guide. That's kind of a problem that a lot of games have, and it's kind of endemic of, of, of the problem that newer gamers find. It's like, well, you say that, but there's really good games that you don't have to do it with, and those are the those are the ones that hold up. The ones that don't are the ones where you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, and I told you, it's other things too. Like Earthworm Jim, for instance, I don't think I'll ever play like all the way through because I was like, after playing a couple other games, this is clunky as shit. Oh yeah, like, no. The jump, the jumps are all over the place. It's your aim is kind of off. It's not a bad game. It's just like one where I'm like, this is something I'm filing away for a while. Yeah, no. Why play other Jim games that does not that aren't as ambitious for their graphics? Which is, it's funny because, like, our talk about Earthworm Jim made me think, like, because I was uh, playing Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City, which I maintain is a good game. It's, like, it's... A, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. It is a action platformer starring Michael Jordan with, like, a lot of basketball references and everything. And it's a good game... But it has some of those Earthworm Jim, like, essentially jump mechanics, I would say, is the best way to put it. Like, how jumps always feel a little bit awkward and a little bit clunky, and you never feel like you're doing the right. Which is the problem that Earthworm Jim has. Like, Earthworm Jim can be a very fun game, but unless you're used to the kind of slippery and awkward jumping controls, it's just not going to be fun. You're you're going to have a bad time. Uh, but Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City has some of that, but I think it's a lot more manageable. The jumps, like, while it has those slippery controls and the large uh, hero sprite, it's not too bad. Like, it's awkward at times, and it's a little bit difficult to make jumps and that sort of thing, but it's still fun. Um, but yeah, so that's another game that will be on stream at some point. Uh, go life up now. Uh, but I think in terms of uh, Japanese style RPGs, Super Mario RPG will be a fantastic introduction for you because it's a very user friendly RPG. It's actually. Um, I know Earthbound is my favorite game of all time. But Super Mario RPG is the first uh, Japanese RPG I beat. Like I yeah, that's, that's what I have filed away. It's it's RPGs are kind of like uh, the best way to put it is like I I know like that like SAS has just like a good it seems like it has like a gajillion. Mm -hmm. So I just have one filed away for now. I'll play through that one, and yeah. then I'll move on to another one. Yeah, but it's also not my priority on on this system because I've played other RPGs before and really. Like, like, Pokemon is the most famous RPG, like, to me, ever. Mm -hmm. Like, it is the it, most famous RPG ever. There's no or Japanese style It's RPG. like, it's, it's gotta be, right? And, like, I've played many a Pokemon game. I haven't really played that many, like, SNES platformers, as weird as that sounds. Mm -hmm. And, like, so, it's, it's like, it's not been a priority for you to play. Like I said, I'm really engrossed, though, in and kind of in the in the in the strategy and, and just kind of the world of, of, of all the cast right now it's been really fun i haven't played that much of it but like i really have like into it oh we're uh, on our uh first uh your sanctuary boss this is titanic ant uh he has yeah, around oh, let's see Ooh, <laughs> math <laughs> yeah psi math remember how we uh you weren't here when we named all our characters and selected all our fun stuff, but uh, Ian Rotten's favorite thing 
was we determined oh, was God. math, and thus his uh, big attack is PSI math. Makes sense. Okay. Yes, I am. And I mean, I we're gonna recover. We'll use life up because that'll put me at around yep two, and that'll max out my health. Uh, oh, and I, I haven't mentioned this yet, but this is probably the best time to do it. Uh, you'll notice that the HP and PP meters are essentially a gauge, like they go up and down. And that's awesome because in later battles when you have multiple, like when you have uh, multiple people in your party, if you mash buttons through the battle and get through it quickly enough, you can heal someone when they take mortal damage and are about to die. Like, if you're fast enough, you could I could land a healing spell when I have mortal damage on me. Which is a great innovation that, again, more RPGs didn't take advantage of. And we're at the first Your Sanctuary. Giant Step. Which is a Bigfoot footprint. Oh, I have back. Mm-hmm. And the first portion of the Soundstone Melody, which... Um, there are multiple different motifs of the Soundstone Melody in the game. Uh, from the actual Soundstone itself to some of the final fanfares, which are, again, really great pieces of game music that I love. Um, so we just gotta head out and uh, go deal with the consequences of trespassing in the uh, Traveling Entertainer Shack. So it'll be fun. Oh, and I'm just going to do a little boop a doop a doop. Make a little savey poo just in case. And thank you all for coming out tonight. I know it's back to back, like one week after another, Kyle replaces childhood. But uh, Earthbound's going to be a little bit different from uh, most of the Kyle replaces childhood streams in that it's more of a long form thing. Like, every once in a while, we'll just pop in, pick up the adventures of Ian Rotten wherever we left off, and continue from there. Uh, there's a lot of Earthbound to be devoured. That's why we're only going to be playing through uh, Giant Step during this... Well, through all of Onet during this first one. And then we'll just be continuing on... that all the battle themes in Earthbound, they're uh, essentially five different battle themes, all with different melodies but with some shared elements, and they use a lot of the lot Super Nintendo to the best of its ability. Best. Kyle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to ask you a question here, because mm -hmm. it's something that in another game I played recently, uh, Turtles in Time, yep. and I really liked it a lot. Like how, like how, like the just the beat them up. It's really like fluid. Um, I feel like when I feel like I don't get like when I get hit, I deserve. It. You know what I mean? Yeah, Turtles in Time. Like, yeah, is, is, it's very know, smooth. Well, well, like, you're all right. the fighting. Well, right. What I don't like is the limit. The limited continues. I feel like you should either, like, I don't, feel, I don't understand why, why it's, like, okay, you get, you, okay, you can continue, but you only get this amount of continues, and then it's game over. I feel like you should be, like, okay. Um, well, uh, well, and one, I, so, one, I don't know. I'm in your I background, so uh, you stuff. might want to check on that, like, my voice is, that's better. And two, the thing um, with... The thing with Turtles in Time and the Limited Continues is because it's an arcade style game and the other crucial factor in an arcade style game like like a Turtles in Time is the fact that uh, they have to extend the replayability or the playability for people. So if they gave you Unlimited Continues in Turtles in Time and you could rent it, and you could beat it, and you would basically see everything the game has to offer. In one rental. And that would be it. And for 
that just doesn't work. Like, there needs to be something that makes people come back. And don't get me wrong, Turtles in Time is a fantastic game, and there's reason to play it a fuckload of times. Like, I could play that game over and over again. Absolutely well, love what, it. Well, what are the reasons, then? Because the way the way you made it just sound is that there's really only reason to play it once. If no, it no. doesn't have... If, if you get... If, if, if the fact that if you don't get unlimited continues, if, it's the only way. It's... it's no. It's, it's, I want to say it's the only way, but you made it sound like it is the predominant reason why people would only rent it if you got unlimited continues. No, if you got unlimited continues, the issue would be, like, there's no challenge in the game. Anytime that you pop turtles in time in, you could beat it. Like, but if it's not unlimited continues, and you can't beat it every single time you play it... You're going to play it and repeatedly, and you're going to get better and better at the game, and eventually you're going to be able to beat it. And then, since you're getting, you've gotten better and better at the game, you're going to try new challenges. So you're going to try it on hard mode. You're going to try and beat it without continuing ones. You're going to try and beat it without losing life. It's a cha You make it a challenge. That's like yeah, but now you're just now you're just relaying like oh it's just one more additional challenge. Like I could try to beat it without continues, even if it was just a limited continues. Yeah, but would you? It's just one. It's just one additional challenge to a game where and that was the big thing I was wondering. I was like, I might be able to understand if it was an arcade port. But if it's an arcade port, I buy it. I buy it with the like okay, I don't have to dump quarters into this thing to beat it. Like that should be like the like the reward for the person who buys it on the console, right? No. Okay. <laughs> like no, no, no. Here's why. Like, I'm not saying there shouldn't be an option or like a code for unlimited continues, or, but like you have to also remember the time being. Like at that time, I do understand it's a t it, it's certainly um. What's what's what what what's the word for it? I'm sure it's like it's 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 um. <sighs> Damn it. And you're gonna say it anyway, but it's because of the rental factor. Like this it's, is a very like, yeah. This is a, this oh. is an old problem that doesn't exist anymore. Will, I'm sorry, I had to interrupt you. I went back to sleep at my house for certain things. So like, before you meet the second character in your party, the female character whose name is traditionally Paula in our game, it's uh, Patty. Um, if you go to sleep after beating the first your sanctuary location, like at a hotel or at your house, she contacts you psychically during the dream. During a dream. I'm a friend you've never met before. My name is Patty. And, she, like, it's the prophecy that Buzz Buzz talked about. And it's the little things like that that I like about the game. Because if you say for whatever reason, never rested at a hotel or anything like that, that vision would never happen to you, and the game would play on like normal. But because you do, you rest somewhere, and you deal with that, um, you get that little nuance that I think is missing in a lot of games, like that little bit of subtlety that's like, there's a little extra for doing something that you don't necessarily have to do. Because with the psychic butterflies in the game and all that, and your life up spells, you don't need to rest. You could just, you know, play through, like, the game and find psychic butterflies and recover your psychic points. But because you rested and because you, uh, did that, you get your next party member calling you out, calling out to you psychically, and I think that's really cool. Now back to Turtles in Time. Okay, so th the thing with arcade ports, and it's basically, like, it's, it was a tradition, especially back then, is the realization that if we give people unlimited continues, they're not going to replay the game, or, like, so some games would not do that, but they'd give you lives or continues or something along those lines via a code so like the contra code in contra because contra with three lives and three continues and one hit kills is a bitch but 
with the 30 life code, you can experience Contra itself and play through it and get ev and enjoy everything out of it. But the game is still a game where you only have like where you get better and better and you have three lives and all that and three continues. Um, with turtles, I'm looking it up right now because I, I if if I was able to find the unlimited continue code, I wouldn't have as big a problem with this. But I had trouble finding it the first time. Okay, during your last continue, press start on controller to multiple continues. Well, that's gonna be kind of difficult, but no, it wouldn't not. be difficult at the time. Uh, oh no! Wait, that's right. You can just program something into as a uh, into controller two on the. Okay, I, 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 yeah, yeah, you could you can program like a button on your keyboard to be controller two start. Yeah. But then you'd need to probably set your controller up to be controller two to use it. Uh, let's see. Maybe not. And I'm going to go fight five police officers to get to the second town in the game. You know, you want to. If you're a child, you want to beat a cop with a baseball bat. That's exactly what you should do. battles actually are a bit more difficult than the uh, boss and giant stuff, because they have really heavy attacks, and for whatever reason, my characters, uh, for whatever reason, my character's locker guts aren't really that good right now, so he's missing a lot of hits in the baseball bat, which stinks, which means I have to use life up more than I would like to. It is what it is. And this guy just called me fat. Oh man. There's gonna be a new 6 up five tomorrow, right? Yeah, ever... it should be. I gotta uh, hope they're talking about Phantom Gold. <laughs> oh, they are. I, I yeah, well, I hope they have... Uh, okay, uh, they do talk about a lot of stuff they get. So I hope there's an extended segment on Santo Gold. I hope they visit the website, because the website is the, one of the craziest websites in existence. Oh, no. <laughs> on Facebook, it was mentioned. Honestly, like... I, I'm, I'm friends with them, so I'm surprised they didn't see it. Let me, let me check. Because... Uh, the... This gang, if you're about to get a treat, because I'm going to share the link to the San Antonio website, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you probably didn't think about it until until I brought it up. And I think on that note, like you're gonna share the link, and I am going to end it for the night. Um, the cops just killed me, and I don't feel like. Whoa, you know, <laughs> that <that's> development. <laughs> The cops just killed me, and I don't feel like going back and facing them again uh, at this very that's second. That's why I, I'd rather just go back and take them on uh, next time that we stream. What are, uh, are we in this game? Are we a human? Or are we like an alien? Are we a we're a, a young boy who lives in Eagle Land in the town of Onet Will. Um, but well, we can throw fire from our hands, so it seems kind of. <laughs> we have magic abilities. It, it happens. 
Um, I'm Kyle Rieger. That was Will. This has been Kyle Replays His Childhood. We've got South Tucson Youth Football on tomorrow on tap, and we should have uh, potentially Attitude Era Mode on Thursday. HCL is on Sunday, if I am not mistaken. Yep, Sunday. And, yeah, that's pretty much all we've got going on this week. So, uh, for all of us here at IRM, just wanted to say thank you for coming out tonight, and... 